Hey, what's up guys? I'm Hop. Thanks for tuning into TFB TV. If you watch a lot of these videos or if you talk to me on Discord, you might know that I used to carry a Beretta Nano. The reason that I bought this gun is because I wanted to carry appendix, but I didn't feel comfortable having a Glock cocked, locked, and pointed at my jock all day long. The Beretta Nano is a very comforting gun to carry appendix because it's got a very long, heavy double action trigger pull. However, after I'd been carrying it for a while, I realized that was not a logical fear, and I actually bought and switched over to a Glock 43. Once again, my unfaithful heart is tempting me towards a new handgun purchase, and I gotta tell you, there is no way it's going to be a single stack like a Glock 43, Beretta APX Carry, Springfield XDS, Ruger LC9, or anything in the car arms catalog. Sorry, Chief. The fact of the matter is that single stack handguns are entirely obsolete for two big reasons. Let's talk about those now. Reason number one should be self-evident, unless you've been living under a rock for the past five years. The proliferation of a new generation of 9mm subcompacts that pack double stack magazine capacities into a single stack footprint using black magic or recovered Roswell technology or something. The SIG P365 got the ball rolling by cramming a 10 round flush fit magazine into a gun the size of a Glock 43, which has a standard capacity of only 6 rounds. Springfield Armory escalated this game of concealed carry brinksmanship with the Hellcat, which has an 11 round magazine. And the Glock Juggernaut finally woke from a long slumber to introduce the G43X, a gun which is significantly bigger than the Hellcat or 365, but has a whopping 10 round magazine. Oh, hang on. Luckily, the aftermarket sprung into action, and now you can get 15 round Glock 43X magazines from Shield Arms, which makes Glock the undisputed king of size efficiency again. They just needed a bit of help to get there. James has talked a few times in the past about gun math, and what he found time and again was that single stack guns cannot compete with double stacks in terms of size efficiency, which is a function of capacity versus size. The end result is that a gun like the SIG 365 shoots as well as a Glock 43 and can be concealed just as easily as a Glock 43, but it does so with four extra rounds of 9mm in a standard magazine. If you already have a Glock 43, you shouldn't necessarily drop everything and go pay COVID panic prices for a 365. But if you're trying to decide between the two, I'm not sure how you could still buy a single stack at this point. It's just voluntarily giving up extra capacity for no added benefit. Single stacks still have an elegant appeal to them. I've shot a ton and I still own quite a few. I'm not trying to tell you to sell your single stack and immediately go buy something else. A lot of these guns are still accurate, reliable, and easy to carry. And don't get me wrong, the G43 is still a superb gun. Almost definitely the best single stack micro 9mm ever made. I can shoot it about 90% as well as a full size Glock, and I don't feel undergunned even with only 6 plus 1 rounds of HST on tap. However, there's no way I would buy one of these again. It just doesn't make sense when the SIG 365 exists. The second thing that makes single stack guns obsolete is appendix carry. Appendix carry isn't new, but it's steadily gaining widespread acceptance in the gun community. James, as you may know, is not a fan. In his opinion, appendix carry turns into appendix carry after you blow off your PP. Oh, son of a bitch! I, however, am a big fan. In my opinion, appendix carry is like a concealed carry cheat code. I've carried a bunch of different guns strong side in the waistband. A Glock 19, Taurus Model 85 snub, even an M43 Firestar at one point because I'm a recovering hipster. I never felt like my gun was very well concealed, particularly when I moved or bent down. So when I really wanted to be discreet, I would end up just pocket carrying a Ruger LCP 380. Appendix carry allows me to carry a lot of gun very comfortably and almost invisibly. I can hide a Glock 19 better in an appendix holster under a t-shirt than I could hide my old Firestar at the 4 o'clock under a jacket. I've also carried a full size Glock with a red dot comfortably in the appendix position. If you're still a slave to pocket carry or strong side inside the waistband carry, you will still need a super slim gun. But when you switch to appendix carry, the tiny differences in width between different single stacks become completely insignificant. The concealed carry market hit peak slim with the Keltec PF9. I don't think it's possible for a 9mm to get any narrower than that, but a pistol that two-dimensional is hard to hold onto and hard to shoot. Thicker guns tame recoil better and are just easier to make hits with. Appendix carry works best if you're a skinny bitch like I am, just as I'm sure that the husky gentleman out there can more easily conceal a gun strong side than I can. 
If you wear large enough cargo shorts, you might even be able to pocket carry a Glock 43. For me, that's not an option. I find appendix carry to be more comfortable than strong side carry. I'd rather appendix carry a full size Glock at this point than strong side carry a single stack micro. I also found that I'm way faster when doing holster work from appendix than I ever was with strong side. I get a faster draw with a better grip, and I can clear the cover garment more easily. I've heard the argument that appendix carry doesn't allow you to draw with one hand, but that's just not true, so go ahead and ignore that one. What I have noticed is that drawing from a seated position or in a car is much easier with appendix carry as well. Seriously guys, it's like having a game shark for real life. I know carrying appendix can be a bit of a mental hurdle. Switching to appendix after carrying a gun for years has an adjustment period. It was like getting comfortable carrying with a round chambered all over again. The Beretta Nano made that transition easier. The gun has an atrociously long and heavy trigger pull, which ameliorated my fears of a femoral contact shot from 124 grain plus P Federal HST. The Nano is kind of a shitty gun though. I can't shoot it as fast or as accurately as the Glock 43, and it's actually a little bigger. If you don't feel safe carrying appendix with a round chambered using a quality Kydex holster, ask yourself why. I don't think carry positions or heavy double action triggers are a good substitute for safe gun handling practices. I carry my Glock 43 in a pretty basic Kydex holster, and if you're observant and careful, appendix carry shouldn't be more dangerous than any other method. Since I started carrying the Beretta Nano appendix, I have completely stopped carrying strong side, and I've also completely stopped pocket carrying my Ruger LCP. Appendix carry gives me faster access to a bigger, more powerful gun than when pocket carrying and it's more comfortable and more discreet than carrying the same size gun at 4 o'clock IWB. I can still see the argument for pocket carry or belly band carry depending on the dress code you have to work with. That's not an issue for me. I don't tuck my shirt in because I'm not a Mormon. So that leaves me with one question. What do I upgrade to? I'm leaning towards the G43X over the SIG 365 because I'm a diehard Glock fanboy, but then again, if I have to buy aftermarket magazines and an aftermarket mag release in order to make the G43X competitive, does that still count as brand loyalty? The alternative is to just sack up and start carrying my Glock 19. Instead of buying a new gun, I could get my Gen 3 G19 milled for a red dot and really take myself into the 21st century. I don't know, that might be too much innovation all at once. Let me know what you think I should do in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We really appreciate their support. We would appreciate it if you would check them out. You can also support us directly via Subscribestar and Patreon. There are links to both of those in the video description, as well as a link to our Discord channel, which is where all the cool kids hide from their daily responsibilities. See you next time.